Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back once again. My name is Jordan, also known as JMonster, and it's been a little while since we last played with our Valakia campaign, and we're going to be picking that up again today. This is going to uh, be the follow-up to the... I don't want to call it a disaster, but we lost our prince and most of our army, so yeah, okay, fine. It was a total disaster last time. Uh, that being said, it wasn't uh, a completely shameful defeat. We took down one of the enemy commanders and butchered a, a very large part of their army. They have since reconstituted it, but so have we. And now, with this new army, christened the Radu's Vengeance, we're going to be uh, we're going to be taking the city of Thessalonica and finishing the great work that our prince has started in the last episode. Radovan is going to be leading the charge. We take this and we're going to go ahead and just let the uh, let the attackers sally out on us and try and beat them in the field. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pass the turn here. Not really a whole lot that we can do. Yes, I know I don't have any siege equipment. I want this. This is intentional. And once we take the, the city of Thessalonica, I think that that would be a good time to try and um, try and consolidate. So there's going to be a lot of, of cuts and, and passing of turns and that sort of thing. Um, that being said, normally I like to, to keep people in the loop uh, and keep them as involved as possible in the decision-making process that I, that I go through when I'm playing these campaigns. And of course that's always useful for newer players. Um, but if you guys don't want me to skip, I mean, I feel like I'm going to need to, but if you guys don't want me to skip and you want me to just go through everything and all my, all my choices in the minutia, then absolutely, I can do that. Just let me know down in the comment section. But in any case, the, uh, the relatively small garrison inside of Thessalonica are going to sally out on us. The biggest things to worry about are the abundance of skirmish troops that they have. The crossbowmen in particular, very deadly in the last, um, the last game, they were the, the bane of our, our prince. So, yeah, hopefully we can shut them down this time. I have some plans in that regard, but in any case, I'll see you guys in the battlefield. Alright, so this time around, we've been blessed with uh, a hill that we are absolutely going to camp on top of. If this, was, if this was a multiplayer game, I probably wouldn't exploit this for everything that's worth, but since it's against the AI and they kind of cheat anyway, I have no such compunctions. So... I'm going to put them into Spear Wall immediately, and uh, I don't know if you saw on the last screen, but I, after reconstituting the army, I added some new additions as well. So we've got some Mosneni, so we're not uh, entirely reliant on a peasant spearman from line. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll have these guys right up here. And we'll have our Mosneni archers in close attendance. Uh, let's see. Radovan is going to lead this army because we're going to need him. Uh, oops. There we go. Now let's take a look at our elevation here. I want to make it as difficult as possible for our enemies. So I'm going to put our army right here and make them walk up that big ugly hill. Over here. Let's see. I'll take three of my Kalarasi archers. Stick them over here. My heavy horse archers, I'm going to send my Kriteni. Very poor armor piercing damage, so... Let's see. Are the Kriteni more of like a... Are they more of a regular kind of hybrid unit, or are they purely skirmish cav? Taking a look at them, they seem relatively well armored. Um, although I think that they... I don't think they're a noble unit. I think they're just... Uh, a regular run-of-the-mill um, rank and file, but that's all right. Let's take these guys here, and we'll use these units to support each other. And uh, we're going to make their uh, their passage up this hill as uncomfortable as possible. All right. Oops, nope. That's not what I wanted. I hit three. Come on. There we go. Okay. So it's a good thing we kept our our Kurteni over here. They do have a unit of uh, mounted sergeants, which is going to be a pain for us. I'm going to turn off the armor piercing, since I don't think these units are, are terribly well armored. Actually, they kind of are. Uh, we might want this instead. Let them do their thing. Everybody here into skirmish mode. Those crossbowmen hard. Uh, 
you guys. Oops, nope, stop, stop. Archers out in front. Let them harass those sergeants. Uh, we'll put a heavy shot onto our jabbies. We'll try and pick on these guys as much as we can. Mounted sergeants. Ah, oh, there we go. Now they're picking them off. Good stuff. Uh, over here, I sense an opportunity. Turn off skirmish mode. Let these guys continue to pick on these mounted sergeants who are extremely oblivious to the fact that we're, we're peppering them down. There's a big opportunity here, though. Ooh. Let's get these guys out of here. You know, with uh, the presence of those of the uh, general's bodyguard. It's not so great. I, I don't really like our odds that much. Ooh, these guys still have an opportunity though. Draw him away. Maybe we could even break off one of our horse archers once we get them clear. Uh, no, they're kind of dumb. They don't really do what they're told. That's sort of frustrating. Oh well, AI is what it is. Down that crossbow militia at the very least. They seem to be after this particular unit. So let's let them chase them off. Yeah, if you want them, come and get them. They're right there for you. There we go. Got that all under control. I don't know who told you guys to be in this weird formation, but I don't like it. I wish you would stop. Oh, who's running? Probably my horse archers. That's okay. Let's get them out of there. Let's see if we can't deal with those chevaliers. We'll bug out of here with our horse archers, that's all I see. They caught them. That's okay. They were really more of a distraction anyhow. There we go. Oop. That's unfortunate. And I'm just gonna let them die. They're, they're, they're screwed anyhow. What in the hell? Oh. You guys are really gonna flee with our general right there? You haven't even taken any damage. Well, that is just a disappointment. Well, let's surround these guys then. Have you guys stop firing at the very least? Well, there's no reason our horse archers can't double back now. All such units should come down this way. Bring our Kurteni around back. Uh, well, we lost a couple units of them, but I'm kind of okay with that. I haven't been terribly impressed with the uh, Kurteni so far. None of our Skirmish Cav really seems to be worth their salt, to be perfectly honest. I don't know if maybe I'm just not using them right, or I'm just not getting the right matchups, but so far they've all just been a disappointing waste of a slot. It's like, yeah, look, I can shoot at these guys for a million years. I'm not going to do any damage to them. Yeah, this is... I'm killing like one or two guys, and this is with four horse archer units you know, shooting them at the same time. That's just... Unfortunate. Put my Mosneni down here. Uh, you guys have all done your job, so let's get you to fall back. The exception of, yes, actually no, you need to come back here. Yeah, I'm even shooting them from behind with four units of horse archers, and I feel like I'm, I'm just not doing enough to make these units worth it. 
I still have that other unit of Kratini? Oh, I do. They're getting attacked, though. I think... We kind of got this under control, so let's break off some of our horse archers and see if we can't give the uh, the second wave the same treatment that we gave the first. Ooh, wow. They've got incredible, incredible range. They do way more damage against horsemen than my, uh, my mounted archers seem to. Spear infantry, they're all gonna die horribly. And yeah, the one tiny unit kind of wiped out that half a unit of spearmen. I gotta say, I love the mod, I love I love the visuals, but there, there seems to be some very strange things off with the balance. simply do not understand why things work the way they do, and that might just be my ignorance, but there's certain units like horse archers that don't seem to be particularly effective at anything, and then a half-strength unit of, of cavalry runs into my, my militia and they die instantly, even though they're spearmen. Now this horribly outnumbered unit of Latin bodyguard it's looking like they're going to beat my general's bodyguard plus three units of infantry, so, hmm, okay. There we go. Dealing with the bow militia at the very least. Is that their general's bodyguard dead yet? No, not yet. Cells ready, boys. Alright. Uh, let's try and use my archers. Deal with those crossbowmen and minute arms as best as we can. Okay, we've destroyed all that bow militia. All of them are dead. Let's use our Musneni to roll up the line. charge with everything we got. Yeah, they they're pretty they're pretty nonplussed about being shot in the back by a ton of horse archers, but okay. Who in hell would be running in this kind of situation? Actually, there we go. We'll trap these units. And now that we've done all that, let's get in there. You know what? I want to take a, I want to take a screenshot of that. I mean, quibbles about balance aside, this mod is fucking gorgeous. Like the work that they've done should. By by no means be uh, be undermined by any complaints I may have about individual units. Get in there, you fools! Oh. For you guys, get those crossbowmen. And there we go. Well, I'm gonna run down as many of these uh, stragglers as I can just so that uh, whatever manages to get back into the city is not going to be significant enough to, to hold it for more than a couple turns. And then I'll see you guys back on the campaign map. Or rather, I will show you the, uh, the uh, casualty screen, and then we'll get to the campaign map, since I know many people like that. And there we are. Oops, no, I don't want to save the replay. Well, for even though one of them got absolutely flattened in the most shameful fashion possible, um... Our spearmen did pretty well. 140-something kills. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go over all of it in detail since the game moves pretty fast, but uh, you guys can pause and you'll be able to see the casualties for everything. 5% um, of all casualties across my army. There we go. 
Well, I have to say, I, I definitely did eat my words a little bit. I found our horse archers were, were pretty useful, but not really for being archers. They were more useful for the fact that I could use them to sandwich infantry between uh, companies of horse archers, or not infantry, but rather skirmishers that were undefended because the AI is kind of smooth-brained. And, um, and yeah, they just didn't seem terribly useful in their capacity as archers, so I think maybe I should focus a little bit more on um, maybe some some other kind of units in our armies. We'll experiment a little bit and, and see what's what I, I find to be the most uh, most useful. Let's see, what kind of money do we have here? We should be able... I don't know what I'll make. I'll make a fortified town or a town. Road development, three wealth. We got here, Manoral Estate, Noble Cap. Fortified from agriculture is nice. The public order is the only thing keeping that uh, our city here, Philippopolis, from running a running amok. Basically, just sending into friggin' chaos. Um, Flotch peasants, militia, placey javelin javelinmen. It'd be useful to get a lot of um, lower tier units, but if I yeah, this will only give us Kalrassi horse archers. Um, let's do that. We'll do the Vlach Peasants and whatever else we can uh, get our hands on there and kind of fill out our infantry roster a little bit more. Um, alright. That's about all we can do for the turn. Let's go ahead and, uh, ooh, I guess we should see if we can take this. Okay, so we're going to need a, a battering ram. So we're going to make a battering ram. We're going to pass the turn and, uh, see how we do next time or we'll uh, we'll take the the city on the next turn I don't know my brain's not working ah, those bloody priests hopefully our, our ally the Bulgarians there can, uh, can get rid of that Latin priest who's been causing all kinds of problem and creeping on our, our little boys Let's see, what did I fail to do? Yeah, I didn't really have the money for that. I, I don't think we're going to be able to do that because of the, the choices that I made earlier on in the campaign anyway. I, I focused more on economy and military than I did the civil aspects, so yeah, that was not really, not really unexpected. Let's see, take it now? We can. Uh, we're going to auto-resolve that because I, I don't see why we would do anything else. And stab! Blech! We killed the single giant knight defending the city, <laughs> and uh, now it is ours. What do we want to do? Um, it's a pretty big city, and it's a regional capital, so I don't want to loot it, because I think that will destroy a lot of the buildings. Uh, so we're going to peacefully occupy it, even though 5,000 gold will go a really long way, especially to helping us convert some of these buildings, which are naturally going to be... Um, going to be of, of a different culture. Well, let's see here. Um, we could merge these two, and that would save us probably about 200 gold, I would think. No, apparently not. Do I need this many horse archers? Yeah, I probably do. And that'll be okay for now. I'm surprised my peasants. My peasants have seen a lot of battle. They're probably the most battle-hardened troops in my whole damn army, and they have no experience chevrons. Even though they got hundreds of kills. I don't, don't know why that would be. That's weird to me. Unless I'm unless they have them and I'm just not seeing them, because I'm a moron or something. Oh, there we go. Got some extra money there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass a few turns, because it's gonna be a while before we're really in a position to uh, to go anywhere, or open up another front, or maybe try and take the rest of the, the Latin Empire. And I know we're not going to be able to take Constantinople for quite some time. Uh, but I do have my eye on this settlement here, Sisychus, uh, which would help us isolate Constantinople and uh, and further reduce the economy of the Latin Empire and make them uh, eventually easy pickings once we get to, to a point where we're able to take on that mighty city. But uh, in any case, I'm gonna, going to uh, make a cut here, and I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Well... This is not so good. Um, yeah, we were kind of caught out here by the Latin Empire. Most of our force are, admittedly, they are skirmishers. And um, 
against like the heavily armored like sergeants and all these kinds of things I don't I don't think this is a fight that we could win um, I'm yeah I, I don't really know what to do here I mean, we can try and auto resolve it's kind of in our favor it could go either way but um, yeah they've just they've got they've got too much stuff for us to beat them at sea this is exactly the kind of fight that the Latin Empire would be good at so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna auto resolve Ah, oh, what do you know? A close victory. Ah, ah, ah. Um, let's kill them all. Thank God, because that would not have that would not have been a fight that we would win uh, if I had to play that manually. One, I'm not very good at siege battles, and two, a lot of my power comes from like skirmishers and mobility and our ability to uh, to uh, keep our enemy disorganized and. Um, and hit them when they're weakest, especially against the AI in a field battle. It's incredibly easy to do. So, if it comes down to just butting our heads against the Latin Empire, we are gonna lose. We're gonna lose nine times out of ten. And this is this is one of the times we haven't lost. So we haven't lost any units either. Back to Thessalonica we go. Mm. Into the city. Thank you. Good job, bud. Uh, okay. And now we'll have to reconstitute that army a second time. <laughs> Brutal! But we did at least manage to save it, which is important. Uh, now we have a choice to make over here. Uh, but also not necessarily. Let's see. It's gonna cost us an incredible amount of funds to, uh, to switch over some of those buildings to our friendly culture. So let's see what we got. Pink sty. Will that synergize well with this? It's 40 food from agriculture. Is that like a market? A meat market. Animal husbandry. Sheep herd. Let's do that. Sure. That seems to synergize the best, I would guess, with the Manoral Estate. We'll have to... Oh, we can build something else. We're not necessarily locked into this. Hold on now. An inn, a market square. Road development is nice. Trade income is also really nice. A gallows. <laughs> Why does it take so much food to build a gallows? I guess we have to feed the prisoners. 750 wealth. From banking would be really nice to have. Um, let's do that and we'll make our wheat field over here. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll, uh, we'll work on the large Jewish community and then we can increase our income from banking by a substantial sum. And then we can actually get our, our economy back on, on track and maybe recruit a second army. One of our, our generals, Tepesh. If you believe it or not, um, the second coming of Vlad, he's starting to become because he's gotten quite, uh, quite strong in terms of in terms of his command stats and his ability to uh, to command men in battle. So I'm really excited to get him out out on the field alongside uh, Radovan. Ugh. Yes. Once we get two generals in the field, we can start to double team some of the settlements, and then taking Constantinople will become a reality. So it seems like that army went straight to Constantinople. Good to know. That's where they're garrisoning. And Sisychus is not quite so undefended as we thought. Uh, if it comes to fighting them in the field, we could definitely beat them, so... Oop. Jeez. My steam windows. It's trolling me. Uh, but if we could land somewhere over here and not get caught by them, and not get caught uh, by the Empire of Nicaea as well, then... We'll be uh, we'll be in uh, a pretty good position to take the city of Sisychus. That being said, speaking of the Emperor of Empire of Nikea, we would uh, we would be right on their doorsteps. So that's two hostile powers. They don't like us very much. That's a bit of a it's a risky move. Uh, we won't want to make that until we're sufficiently strong enough to take both of them on at the same time, which might be some time. So just, yeah, just wanted to update you guys a little bit on that. I'm gonna go ahead and pass a few more turns, and we'll see what happens. Ooh, this is a serious development. So apparently, 
uh, Bulgaria is being attacked by the Kipchak Confederacy. And they're going to have another ally as well. I'd like to see where these guys are on the map. So they're quite a ways away. We'll enter the war on the side of our overlord. That does complicate things somewhat. Um, we were, we we're in a good position to start building up for a, a campaign against the, the Latin Empire and in due time against the Empire of Nikea. But now, our overlord is being attacked by the Kipchaks. Not so great. Um, which normally I'd be kind of okay with. I'd hope maybe they'd go for the Bulgarians and then we could betray, betray the Bulgarians and eat them. And, uh, and take some of their territory, but Targoviste is the closest city to the uh, to the Kipchaks, which I believe are over... No, maybe they're not. Maybe the Hungarians have have uh, provided us with a bit of a buffer, so it might be the Kipchaks are actually over this direction. So that opens up some new possibilities for us if we want to sail across the sea, but naturally there are some dangers involved as well if we leave our homeland undefended. Uh, namely, the Latin Empire might take all of our gains away from us in Philippopolis. And, uh, and Thessalonica, so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a dilemma, but yeah, I just want to let you guys know. For now, I'm gonna pass a few more turns. And so, the time has come to take on the Latin Empire. It is now the dead of winter, and um, it seems that our allies here, the Bulgarians, have already begun to lay siege to Constantinople. I'm gonna let them do that all by their lonesome. Because I want Sisygus. Sisygus is a prize that I claim for myself. And look who it is. Good old Renault. I'm pretty sure that's the same guy that we fought earlier. Uh, he's also got a few friends inside the city. That is okay. What we are going to do... Make a few siege... Siege... Oh. Oh, wow. So we're going to take this on the next turn, I think. And then elsewhere, it's worth noting that I managed to save enough money to get started on an iconography studio, which is going to increase our wealth by 850 from culture. Now, whether or not that translates into raw uh, money into my coffers per turn, or if there's like some system of modifiers that limit it, limits it to whatever it happens to be, I still think that that's a pretty good idea. And of course, it's going to help spread our, uh, our particular religion as well and keep that strong in, uh, in Thessalonica. I'm pretty sure... At least I'm pretty sure that's the right religion. I could be wrong. Seems like this is orthodoxy, but I thought that we were orthodoxy. Being, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're, we're Catholic, that seems to be the case. I've probably just gotten it confused, but I thought that we were orthodox Christians, but oh well, the money is nice, let's do that. Let's pass the turn here. And the days of the Latin Empire are numbered. Up, oh, there, priest. One final gasp at, uh, at being a thorn in our side, and he's not going to be around for too much longer, as it seems like they're going to lose both of their two remaining settlements in a single turn. And then they're going to be gone, and their shit's going to be my shit, which I'm really excited about. Come on, past them turns. Ooh, it seems like Hungary is under attack. Uh, what do we got here? Tepesh! Oh no, he's really good too. I don't want him to create gained. Unpopular. Extreme survival is pet development by member of your family. Pay him off, ignore. I can't lose any more control. Um, my power is already not very strong. And there's uh, a lot of unfortunate um, consequences because of that. So we're going to pay him off. Do what I can. I'm going to go over here. Night attack. We're going to auto-resolve. And we'll be aggressive. Into your face! That's right. Casualties weren't that high. And Sisychus is now mine. Uh, Alright. Still predominantly orthodox, which is weird because the crusaders that, uh, that took over Constantinople and established the Latin Empire were Catholic. And Constantinople is Catholic. But one of their territories is predominantly orthodox. I don't know. 
I guess that kind of makes sense. Like this would be their their base of power, and then everything else outlying is just kind of they just do whatever they want. The Latin Empire was never particularly good at administration, so maybe that's why. Ooh, Thessalonica is very unhappy. I don't know why my my money suddenly dropped to to nothing. Ah, uh -huh. probably. Because the Holy Roman Empire has come to claim Hungary. That's, uh, that's an issue. Now, let's see how they feel about me. They are neutral, but improving. Who are they also at war with? Croatia, Toulouse, Hungary. I wonder if we could convince our allies our ally, the uh, Bulgarians, to try and attack them. We'll see. Once they take the city here of Gula, blah, 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 Gula Fer, Fa, Fe, Fervar, I don't know. I've, I've never learned how to pronounce anything in uh, in Hungarian. So, okay. Vlad, Vlad Tepish. See, this is the guy I was really excited about. He's a really good general, and now I kind of don't want... He's only five loyalties, so now I almost don't want to... More influential than the ruler. I need to do something about his influence. I don't know how to, though. Is there, like, a... Like, a thing that I can do? Integrity, public order. Don't want to give him any more influence. Yeah, I need to give my my ruler more influence, though. That's probably it. Hmm. Well, something needs to be done because a lot of my economy comes from trade with um with the Hungarians. Now the nearest Hungarian outpost is being eaten by two very powerful armies. So now that the Bulgarians. Selected defenses. Oh, cool. Well, we'll fight this on the uh, on the battlefield. But now that the Bulgarians have taken Constantinople and the Latin Empire is on its last legs, maybe I can, can convince my allies there to uh, to uh, help me destroy them. Although I don't, I'm still a, like a vassal state or a client state. I don't think I have the ability to even set war targets, which is unfortunate and frustrating. But what can you do? This is gonna be this is gonna be just brutal. I'm sure many of you out there watch Game of Thrones. You're probably being fans of medieval history. You're probably also fans of medieval period. I don't want to say period dramas, but it's set sort of in the High Middle Ages. So yeah, okay, let's go with period dramas. And uh, I'm sure many of you have seen the unfortunate fate that met Stannis Baratheon and his army. And that's what's gonna happen here today. Mounted artillery. Now, where can I put my artillery? One there. And. One there. Neato. You guys can be two. You guys can be three. And. We'll figure this out with the rest of you. Um, multiple artillery. It's good to go. Let's have you shoot flaming rounds because those are neat. Although explosive rounds are equally as neat. Okay. Put them into skirmish mode. Send you guys out this way. My bowmen up there. Oh, this is gonna be ugly. Oh, good thing they're going for the wrong units. You guys stop. Oh boy. Oh, frontal charge into my militia spearmen. I'm apparently going to kill most of them. Huh. 
This is just gratuitous, really. I don't, re I don't actually need to go out here and fight them like this, but it's fun to do so. Wow, my Kriteni can do nothing against these these chevaliers. Like, what is even the point of skirmish cavalry? I could just I could just bring more melee cavalry and do amazingly well and get way more out of it than I do with a skirmish cav. I just don't see the purpose. Cool. Let's advance on these guys. We'll finish this off. Pretty cool though. I don't really get to zoom in very often, but I'll be damned if that's not a good, a damn nice uh, screenshot. And that's the end of the Latin Empire. That is how they end. Oh, my poor Masnetti seems to be getting shot in the rear by my own towers, which I can't turn off, unfortunately. Uh, have you stop firing. Before you kill my general or something unfortunate like that. guys losing? Sure is taking these mounted troops here. Quite a while to deal with bow militia. Probably something to do with Attila's match combat system though. It does kind of have, uh, have an effect on pacing. It's a bad time to be a member of the Latin Empire. Glorious. There we go. We lost the unit of our Curteni, but honestly, who cares? Skirmish cavalry just doesn't seem to be worth bringing. Um, I may keep some of my bow cav just because I found them to be very useful for many different things, but the Curteni, I think I'm just going to disband just don't see why I would want them. Especially not a four-man unit that's going to be sitting there sucking resources out of my coffers for who knows how many turns. Principality of it. I have no idea where that is. Hostile agent. Enemy killed in battle. Yes, indeed. Uh, we are going to disband you. You are expensive, and you don't really bring any value to my army. Um, something needs to be done about this, though. I don't think I can set war targets until maybe they've taken something, or maybe I can't set them at all. But we do have enough left over now. Maybe. Oh, I have the max number of armies active. Do I though? Ready for battle. Hmm. Philippopolis is doing okay. It will be fine if I take my, my prince out of there. Hmm, what's all this about? Oh, I see. Well, that's quite nice. A fountain. Maintenance. Sanitation, that's probably something we need to worry about in Turgo uh, A lot of wealth from industry, from the artist's artist studio. Diaspora, this will help with our public order and our growth, so let's do that. That's going to wipe out our money for this turn, so let's go ahead. We'll pass a few more turns, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright, here we are again. And uh, we have an imminent rebellion in... Uh, in the city of Thessalonica. So, now I think is a pretty decent time to... Ooh, I think I'm 
half the spearmen. Give it almost an any. Boyeri. A couple of horse archers. And we're gonna hand those over to our prince. And we're gonna send him down here to crush this rebellion. In the meantime, we're gonna have to send Radu back to Sisygus with a much reduced host to uh, to try and hold his ground and hold our, our new territory for the time being. And then we've got a few of our econ economic buildings uh, online, namely our uh, iconography studio, which has given me a ton more money. So I will be able to raise some new forces and uh, do a few other things as well. What do we have here, Axemen? Oh, never mind, that's not me. <laughs> I can't give them orders. Let's go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and end the turn there. Oh, and by the way, the Latin Empire is no more. They have been completely destroyed. Constantinople belongs to... Uh, to the Bulgarians, and Sisygus belongs to their faithful servant, the Dutch. Is it Dutchy? Can't remember what it's called. The Voivodeship of Wallachia, aka us. Um, other things, the Holy Roman Empire has taken uh, the city to the north of Targoviste. That's not great. Um, why is our money back down now? Radovan. His Radovan's loyalty is waving. Why is everyone's loyalty waving? I don't know how to fix that. I wish that there were some steps that I could take. Oh my god, we lost the city. Oh, we lost the Salonica. Didn't think that that would happen. Well, we're gonna friggin' take it back. Lucian. Valachian pretender. Oh, we have a rebellion. Well. Now might be a good time for our Lord and Savior to uh, start to assert his authority a little bit more. He's been a bit of an absentee king up here in Targovishte doing his own thing. Um, but we have the majority of our forces under his command, so in hindsight, it's a good idea. Um, and Radu, Radovan, I'm so disappointed in you. How could your loyalty be waving? Maybe because he feels like he's doing all the work. Still assign a provincial governor. Where am I assigned him to? Asia. Let's do that. Oh, good. Uh, let's see. Growth. I, I like to use that. It seems like my default because there's just no downside to it whatsoever. If we can defeat these pretenders with our king or our prince, maybe that will help assert our authority a little bit more, increase everyone's loyalty, get some power back, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I don't really know how the politics system works in Attila, so I'm, I'm obviously failing at it miserably because my empire is destroying itself. Uh, I will occupy you. Although really what I ought to do is loot and occupy you, but honestly I've spent a lot of money here gonna give me my money back good up to 631 per turn again uh, let's repair that repair that repair that and repair that and I'll all be ready for us next turn uh, Devon two loyalty contributing factors power and Imperium Civil War personal loyalty is not bad military success is pretty good he's more influential than our ruler it's time to boot him. But who can I replace him with? I don't have the money to replace him with anybody right now, but I will in the next turn. So as long as he doesn't revolt on the next turn, then uh, then uh, things will be okay. I almost feel like I should disband some of these troops here. If he, if he lasts one more turn and we don't lose Sisychus, then it'll be okay. Come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Come on, Radovan. You're my buddy. You took up the mantle after our first prince was killed very foolishly. Don't let me down. Wavering loyalty. Okay. No. We'll deal with these guys. Got them cornered here in this cove like the pirates that they are. Mm. 
no night attack for me, apparently. We'll be aggressive. And destroy them as we knew we would. And I'm gonna go and relieve Radovan of his troops. So I don't lose any more of my any of my loyal soldiers here. Uh, let's see. Ooh, that's useful. That increases my morale. Don't you dare, Radovan. Don't you dare. He's back up to five. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> so disaster very much averted. Or avoided. Uh, let's execute some deserters here. They don't seem to respect my authority. Vlachian repen uh, pretenders were put down like the dogs that they are interesting empire building experience so far. I have to say I really enjoy the campaign as much as you know I've, I've complained about units and stuff but you know, don't take it personally I am just testing this game. I still love the mod and I enjoy playing it but the depth on the campaign map and the the way that I have to actually stop and, and think about things because there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different uh, variables and a lot of things to, to consider and keep in mind. Let's see here. Well, I feel safe in giving Radovan back his army. Since I know he's not going to desert me on the next turn. But yeah, I, I love the campaign so far. Um, I've really had to, to stop and think about things and make very careful choices. And uh, yeah, I love it. I need to get my ass back to Thessalonica though before it revolts on me again. Uh, let's see. 988 on the next turn. We'll do a few more turns, and I think we'll call it there. It's been a, a pretty eventful episode. We, uh, we've escaped disaster on, on more than one occasion, partially through pure luck and partially through uh, through some, some solid decision making, which I like. I like to have elements of luck in my campaigns. Um, sometimes luck can be frustrating, for sure, but, you know, that's kind of life, and then you make decisions and have them have them matter and have uh, an impact on the campaign map and how your campaign unfolds. I love it. Wouldn't change it. Not for nothing. Let's see if we can get our prince back in there and have him calm people down. Unfortunately, no. Um, let's see. What kind of garrison? We don't have a garrison. We have zero garrison. Um, damn. We'll send Radovan back this way, and maybe we'll have to abandon Sisychus to the, uh, to the Nicaeans who we can see are nearby and ready to attack it, but it's no sense in Radu being over here, so we'll have to abandon that conquest. Um, if they attack us, well, maybe our our overlord here will come to our defense. Mm, the Bulgarians helped us out. Awful nice of them. Die, you dogs. Kill them all. We'll crush them in the next turn. Come on. I really want to kill them. Put them down for Radu. Hopefully we'll get him a little bit more of a bonus to his loyalty. If he's having more success on the, on the field of battle. <clears throat> oh, come on. That's right, you damn dirty rebels. We'll punish our forces there. Back to Sisychus we go. There we go, now we actually got money here. So we need to we need to convert this to a castle, I think. Um, and we'll do that on the next turn. Philippopolis is sufficiently converted so far. Targovishte is having, having a good time. Town barracks, what can we do with you? 
If I upgrade you, I get more early period Musneni, do I not? Mm, it costs me a lot of money, though. Money which I can't afford to spend. Uh, Tibor. Untrustworthy. 5% chance of having illegitimate children. <laughs> Raise banner. What can I do? Anything here? Can do anything for your loyalty? Oh, that's kind of cool. To influence per turn. That's nice. Uh, quaff. Or a coif. Whatever. Oh, I forgot to give him his skills, didn't I? There we go. He's a well rounded governor. Man, it's been hell trying to consolidate our possessions. It's not easy. You have to expand very, very slowly as uh, Valachia, otherwise, you will be overextended. At least we have the Bulgarians to call on every once and again. Ooh. That's looking like a big fight there. One that I'm not entirely certain that we will uh, we will win. Yeah, we have no reinforcements in Sisychus whatsoever. I think it might be time to just burn the city to the ground. Hmm. Yeah. Gonna abandon it. We fall back to Philippopolis. Reconstitute our forces. Pegovish they convert to a castle. Cool. Let's pass one more turn. Let's see what happens. Let's see if they take Sisicus from us. They probably will. Ugh, another rebellion. Aw, oh, thank you, Bulgaria. They're, they've been real bros so far. I can't believe I wanted to attack them, but I also do want to escape from under their yoke, so when that moment comes, it's, it's going to be heartbreaking for me. I can't abandon the settlement. What can I do then? Ridiculous. Contataroi. I will not forget this, Byzantium. Oh no! Oh no! Can't convert that to anything yet. Um. Yeah, I think that's gonna do for the episode. We've had a lot of ups and downs. We managed to take the city of Sisygus and almost managed to make off with all of its goods. And then the Byzantines got us. Now they're going to take all of our goods instead. That sucks. What can you do? Um, but in any case, hope you guys have enjoyed this episode so far. Hope, uh, and I hope you'll join me for the next episode. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.